So this is a simple project. You can use any kind of image. You can use trees, you can use palm trees um, you, for your silhouette. Basically, this is a silhouette painting. We're going to do a background, a blue of a sky, you know, and I'm going to show you some fun tricks with that. Um, and you could like any shape you want to make your silhouettes. I use birds and I have like kind of like crows because it reminds me of when I lived in Santa Barbara. We had lots of crows that would hang out on the telephone wire and talk. And they weren't really crow. I don't know what they were. I guess they were crows, big, huge blackbirds. And they just made all kinds of noise, in the, especially in the morning. And like they had a meeting or something. So uh, this remind gives me a memory of that. But if you wanted to do like a simple tree or a palm tree or anything as your silhouette, you can do that as well. So what you're going to need, um, I basically, as far as watercolors are concerned, um, I've got like a, this is a, my favorite set, but if you use blues, they're kind of in the, um, you can use a blue that maybe is like an ultramarine blue is more of this, um, it's kind of a, a blue that's very more on the cool side. And then uh, a thalo blue is going to be more, more uh, hot, you know, a little bit, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a little hotter, a little warmer, I guess. So you can do a combination of thalo blue, ultramarine blue, any blue that you like or even combination of blues. So that is one of the colors for the background. That will be the background. And then I'm going to use a very neutral colored. This one, I think of Payne's gray or a neutral tint is what I'm going to use for the birds. If you just have black ink, you can use that as well to make your silhouette. Just um, when you decide to do this, draw your, your sketch of whatever you're going to silhouette in black, or it's going to be dark. That's your pencil sketch. And the rest is just going to be, we're going to wash right over this um you'll need a flat brush i just been dying to use this i haven't used it yet it's so cute it's a little travel brush it's called a motler but i don't know let's see what it does but it's just a flat wash brush i have these two adorable little flat things i had in my travel kit and then for brushes i've, I've got these i've never used before i just wanted to try them um to do the silhouette you want a round brush so like this is a pretty small one this is a number Hey, what the number is that? I think it's a number six silver black velvet. If you have any type, this is just my travel brushes. I happen to have never used them. So I wanted to try them since I'm not traveling, but I have these beautiful brushes. So might as well just start working with them now. Um, these are just different brushes that I've had over the years. And I wanted to play with them because I just love them. But these are probably a little big for this project. These are really large. So just trying to get a medium size medium to small size brush like these this size um a six or an eight to do this the the uh um silhouette and then a flat wash brush and another thing you'll need i don't have any with me clean i don't have any kleenex i just have some uh microfiber towels i'm hoping it will work but kleenex works really good for making uh, clouds so if you have some kleenex that's perfect if not a little soft rag I'm hoping this microfiber will do the job. I didn't think about it. I should probably gotten some cotton something, like a cotton rag, but we'll see. We'll see if this works. I usually like to have a little spray bottle for just to wet my paints, water, of course, and your colors. And I've got other colors here too that I try to bring out. Um, just, you know, your basic colors. And for those who need, uh, for, for those who aren't used to watercolor, or don't know the color pigments, um, there we can just start. There are actually some classes that we've done. We kind of did some color mixing. So, um, but watercolor in itself is is a beautiful medium, and a lot of people are intimidated by it. But it really is a, just a fun, spontaneous me medium. I have a 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Um, it's you know it's been mounted. I've been uh, I taped it to a a board, and that's just so that I can move it around easy. I like doing that. <clears throat> and then the tape helps hold it down. Another thing I forgot, which I haven't plugged in yet, I forgot to do that. I told everybody in the email, plug in your hair dryer or your heat tool, whatever you've got. I'm just going to plug this in because definitely we'll need it as we work. Because it's, you know, we'll have a nice wet wash we'll want to dry before we do the silhouette. So there, I've got it plugged in. And now I'm ready to do it. So what you'll need is um, take your brush that, you know, your flat brush, 
and then make a mixture of color. So I'm going to do a blue, kind of a blue mix, and I'm going to kind of decide, I have to decide which color is going to work the best. Now, the funny thing is, when you've got um, little tiny pans like this, little half pans or full pans, sometimes a big wash brush, you know, especially in those little half pans, it doesn't fit. So what I'm going to do is take my this brush here that I'm not going to use for the painting, but I am going to use it to mix color. <clears throat> so I'll just put this out here and I've got my little little tray, whatever you've got something to mix in. I'm going to just make up mix up a little combination of blue and then it's good to mix things on a white tray so you can see what your colors look like. So this is, a, I believe, is a ultramarine blue, so it's a very nice cool blue. So I'll show you the difference. That's the ultramarine. And if you want to use a phthalo, it's kind of fun to mix them. This is, I believe, is a phthalo. I can tell, I'll be able to tell when I see it. Okay, so there's the phthalo. You can see it's a little bit of a different color. It's like a more on the warmer side or greener side, kind of just a different. This is more on the purpley side that can have some more green. But these as a combination really are nice. You can use both. I'm just going to kind of put up a combination of the two up here. And I'm going to make enough of a puddle of color so that my so I can do the sky. Um, if you want a little um, to be like a cloudy or like a, a, a rainy sky where it's not, you know, or you might be kind of gray, gloomy, you could add a little gray neutral tint. There's the, that's a neutral tint where it's you, almost a black color, but you know, you want it to be transparent. So that would give it a little bit of kind of that moody kind of background. So I've got these three colors. Now what I'm going to do is take my brush, my uh, this brush, I've never used it. I'm going to do a wash of color all the way across and over this, this drawing. I'm going to go ahead and wet this brush because it's never been used. If you're getting a brand new brush, always get that. If there's any starch or any kind of sizing in the brush, you want to get it out of there just before you start. So I've got I've got that nice and moist. And I'm just going to go ahead and take some of this blue and run it right across the uh, whole paper. And I'm going to kind of mix the blues together, maybe throw in that gray. It looks like this is drinking up a lot of color. So now I've got to, <laughs> I've got to quickly add some more. Um, a medium wash. This is probably a little on the heavy side, but kind of, this is a new brush I've never used before. So it's definitely uh, drinking up the color a lot quicker than I thought it would. So now got some blue, beautiful blue kind of going. And now's the time you can see it's kind of a nice mid tone wash of color. And I'm going to take my, if you have tissue, it's a lot better than this, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to blot it kind of, and it's working, it's lifting. I'm making uh, some clouds. And you can just do that by taking your, just lifting off the color, rotating the tissue. It really works a lot better with the tissue though than this. Um, these are, this is not as, I think with the tissue, you get smaller, you don't get the textures like I'm getting here. So I'm just going to do a little kind of like a cloudy sky, like just, you know, random puppy clouds going through. And this uh, paint is lifting really nicely off the paper. Now, it depends on the paper you have. Some papers don't lift as easy. So, uh, so you'll know when you're doing it um, if it's lifting or not. So I'm just kind of gently lifting that out. It looks like it's kind of what I wanted. Um, I could add more blue if I want, but I think that that's probably good enough. So simple, simple. Now I'm going to just dry that layer. And this is, I'm using a heat gun. This is a really, it's hot, but it doesn't blow everything. The reason I like it, it doesn't blow things too much. So if you have a hair dryer, just set it on the low setting, kind of on the hot low setting, and then it will just dry your paints really well. But you want to get this la this uh, layer really really dry. You no, know, we don't. You know, right now my paper is buckling, which is normal. Um, just so you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty buckly. <laughs> but I would like it to be flat, so I'm going to keep. I'll keep drying this until I kind of get that flat, get it to lay down flat again. And that just takes a little time. 
a little patience. And then it's once you get it fairly dry. I mean, you don't you don't want it to have any moisture because otherwise your next your silhouette's going to be um, it will bleed into the sky, and you don't want that. I'm just going to concentrate, especially in the area where I'm going to do the do the silhouette. And this is the birds on a wire, and I'm using a pretty large sheet of paper. I think this would look really cute with this on a smaller sheet. You can have as many birds on your wire as you want. All right, there we go. So now I've got it's ready for the next thing. Simple. The next thing is just to do the silhouette. So you would use a small brush that will give you detail. Like this one looks like it'll give me nice detail. And I'm going to start with this neutral tint color here. And with this one, you may want to get, you may have to do more than one layer to uh, get the the, uh, the density, but, and you could also mix a little blue with it. I'm just going to get a concentrated amount of this dark color, which I believe is neutral tint. Um, this is a, I believe it's a schminky neutral tint. Yeah, so that's a nice dark color. You can just use any dark color. I mean, if you keep layering, you'll, it'll look black anyway. It will appear black. So it doesn't have to be ink, just anything that will stop the light from the paper coming through. So now I'm just going to start by just starting on the left side and I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to fill in only the parts that I sketched. So I've got my little bird feet and then I'm just going to fill it in a little silhouette. So this is like so simple, but it becomes a really beautiful, really powerful image once you get that uh, filled in just the whole thing like it's like it's uh sun is you know going down at the end of the day you've got this silhouettes of birds you've probably seen this um or trees or whatever uh, that whenever you see that beautiful oh you know what i forgot i should have thought this would have been gorgeous in a sunset also i think that would have been my next if i do another one i think i'll do one that's a sunset so just keep your um, level of concentration on the black or the dark color really pretty even and fill in those little fill in the birds. And you can always add more to your, you know, you can always add more. So just kind of start with your drawing and then if you wanted it to, to do more with it, you can. So this little I got it like this, I want the little little claws. I want to show that those claws are really on there. And since we're going so much darker, that's why the light sky was, you know, just simple. I don't have to go around anything because the silhouette is going to cover anything that I painted previously. And here with the with the uh, tail feathers, I kind of want the feathers to show. So I'm going to just do kind of a brushing down. And I'm just going to kind of leave those tail feathers a little bit rough like what letting that brush do the work of the tail feathers so that it looks you know, like that just kind of play with that I'm leaving those so it looks more feathery and i'll just do the second one and just work my way across the page and i'll just work go ahead and continue the line here where the the uh where there's this uh, telephone wire is what this one is I'm just kind of going inside the lines of my sketch and bringing and then going ahead with the bird. Yeah, the sunset, I think, would look so beautiful. If you and if you don't get enough darkness the first time around on your uh, bird, you can you can always go back afterwards, like after this layer dries and it still seems like it's not dark enough. Just just do another layer and you will have you can. Uh, you'd be able to get that bird nice and dark like a silhouette. If you don't have black or dark neutral tint, you can mix you can mix uh, all of your colors you could mix together and it is kind of, if you, as long as they're concentrated, you can get what looks like black. If you get uh, your primary colors, put the just mix them all together in equal amounts, you will it will look black. So whatever you've got, 
Sumi Inc. also works really well for this. This would be a, it'd be a very um, different, even though Sumi Inc. dries much more flat and it's very dense and very black, but it, it, that also works, or just India Ink if you wanted to use that. If you have India Ink, um, even a permanent marker, if all, if you, all you had was a Sharpie or something, you could do the silhouette with that as well. Of course, the Sharpie, I don't know how it would make, if it would make smooth lines though. That's the only thing I kind of wonder about. I haven't tried it. I'm just making those little tail feathers, just a little more jagged. I think I want to add some more jaggedy to this one like that. And then just bring it across. This one is just such a relaxing thing because it's just a matter of you've got the dramatic light and dark differences with very simple lines really not a lot of detail but just fun fun looking uh painting it could be a card it could be you know just it could this would actually look good on a wall if i had if i was feeling industrious enough i'd i'd uh take a wall in my house and just do something like this i think it'd be fun but I'll stick with the painting for now. It's been years since I've done anything on a large scale, just keeping it simple and small nowadays, just for relaxing. This would be also nice if you could add, kind of learning a little bit about additives in my watercolors. I'm gonna share those with you a little bit, um, like adding ox gall liquid or ox gall to your wash will give it your water your your colors will spread better on the surface of the papers um, ox skull is a great medium another medium to have in your watercolor stash would be gum arabic and gum arabic i've been playing with yesterday i actually made some my own gum arabic not as good it's not as good as the uh kind you buy from you know the art supply quality but what it does is it will give your watercolor, if you have an inexpensive watercolor that maybe doesn't have enough translucency or, or shine or just kind of chalky, sometimes some of those colors kind of look chalky, you can add gum arabic to your water mixture and it, it's amazing what you can, uh, what, how much better it will look. So now I've got that, how, this is how quick that was. I just did it. <laughs> it's done. So. Now I could see that maybe, I think that came out pretty evenly. Um, I may do another layer when this dries. But I'll just take a look at it now because watercolor does dry a little lighter than what, you know, once it's dry, you kind of, I don't know what the percentage is, but it does dry a few shades lighter. I'm just going to check this to make sure it's dark, dark enough. I'm going to just dry these little pieces off. dry these little birds and I really think that it looks fine but I'm going to try one I see the middle bird it looks a little bit lighter than the other two probably because I added more water to it so I'm going to go ahead and give it another try one more just give it another uh, glaze another layer just making sure if you're going to be going layer if you want layers and you don't want weird puddling and weird things that happen. You want to dry your watercolors between each layer. So this one looks dense enough and dark enough, but the middle one needs a little, another, just another layer. And that's only to do this only after it's dry. So there I'm gonna just do, kind of just fill it in and get, get that a little darker. And nice and even for the silhouette. And I might not need to go on the beak, but I'm just going to go on the body because that's where it looks a little bit too light. And then bring it down and fill that whole thing in because it will show the, um, you'd see the brush marks if you don't finish, fill it in completely. So there is that one. So that looks good. And I think maybe this one also needs it. So I'm just going to give it another. You might not see it on your end, but I see it on mine. So I'm just going to give it another little brush through and I'm going to see basically fill the whole thing in so it doesn't show those brush marks 
that's pretty much it. Now I'll just go ahead and hit it with the dryer. With heat gun. And what happens is after I take this tape off, it's going to look so much better with the tape off. And the, sometimes this tape that I use, it can be distracting because I have these stripes or sometimes I'll have birds on it. It's a little distracting, but it, it's, this washi tape is so nice because it just leaves a nice, sharp, crisp line around the edge. Okay, there's it, there it is. So my I noticed that my little uh, places where my the rag shows the texture, you can see there's a texture on that. If you want to get rid of that, okay, so I'm going to try something. Why not? Because I might as well try it. I'm going to take a totally clear water. I'm going to use this white round brush and I'm going to take the rag. I'm going to go in and I'm going to try to soften these little obvious lines. So I'm just going to go in here with a wet brush. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try. I'm going to go where that these where these looks like lines are. And I'm just trying to soften them. And the re what I'm doing is going in the opposite direction of what the, where the lines are, you know, the different direction. And it looks like it's softening them, so that's good. You don't want to rub too hard on this kind of thing because um, you would lose, you might lose some of the paper surface. You don't want that to happen. But so you can do, you can kind of go back in and lighten a little bit if you want. Just be careful when you're rubbing not to rub too hard because some papers are more fussy than others. <laughs> some of them just don't like to be, they don't like to be uh, played with. So that is the bird. Um, birds on a wire. I'm going to just take off the tape. I actually have to hit it with the gun first. Just to kind of get that nice and flat before I remove the tape. The tape kind of react, it sort of works as a stretchy stretcher. So you're, you know, you want your paper to go flat again before you remove the tape. All right, there's that. Now I'm just going to take this off and when you tape, when you to remove tape like this, just always kind of go slowly and kind of pull gently and just careful not to lift any of the paper. And you can see I sketched, there's a little sketch part here. I'll have to erase that. Um, just a little, when I sketched it, I sketched it before I put the tape on. I'm just gently removing it. This is just a really super quick painting. And it's a good exercise on making a wash, you know, making clouds, making sky. And you could try all colors of sky. You can try, you know, a vibrant you know, sunset with purples and, whoops, see my paper's ripping. It was ripping right in the corner there. Hmm. Now it's, looks like it's okay. There it is. That is the painting. So there, when you see, on this paper, Paper, now you can see the weight of it. You can erase your sketch, pencil sketch, if you have, if any of it's still showing. And there it is. So I'm going to spotlight that again. And just a very light wash, because if I go too dark, it's going to look really obvious. So, and then you can just kind of add some watercolor, um, you know, like just gives it more interest, I think, to do that. And I'm just going to blot a little bit out of that. And then I'm going to take the next section where my cloud is, and I'm going to, I see that this doesn't really need it, but I see right in here it does. So I'm just going to kind of, and I don't want to have an obvious, I want things to blend. So I'm just going to you know, kind of make a very painterly sort of movement on the clouds. This is changing it a little bit, changing the feel of it, but I kind of like that, you know, kind of get, looks more painterly, I guess, the word I'm looking for. But I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my phthalo blue, and I see uh, this area here could be enhanced the same way. And I'm just kind of going very sketchy like, kind of. And I'll go ahead and cover that one up, and I'll just bring this around like that. And then I could blot so that it's not so dark. Of course, you know, we do, watercolors are going to fade or lighten. So I'm just going to do this. Now, I don't want to touch my silhouettes because I. I'm afraid I'll smear it, so I have to, if you're going to go, you know, just don't touch the silhouette part, because then mm -hmm. uh, that will cause, that will probably smear, and then you'll be, oh, no. 
So I'm just kind of moving really quickly just to give that sky a little and blotting a little bit, just to kind of bring out areas and light to make it look lighter around it. So we'll just, so have you been trying that? Is that working for you, Joanne? Well, yours was started out light where mine is darker to begin with. So I didn't want to make it darker. <laughs> Got it. Right. <laughs> so yeah, see how dark mine was already. And yeah. I, I'm watching, I think part of my problem is I'm not really sure how to get it that uh, watery to start with. I'm trying to watch yeah. you. Like, I'm not really sure what you're dipping. Okay. You can't see the paint or the water. Oh, so when you're dipping you into go. things, right. I'm, not, so, I'm not sure if you're just adding water, if you're adding more paint or what actually, you're doing. Actually, what I'm doing is I made that wash of blue. So you can see kind of a very light. I mean, this is like a mostly water. And then I go back in and I dip it in water. So you keep adding kind of, more water is what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just adding more yeah. water. And that, because every layer you do is going to make your uh, value dark, it'll darken it. So if you start out light, um, then you'll have, um, then you can always go back and enhance that, you know, darken it by just by making more layers. So there's kind of, let me just go cover that up. So I'm kind of done with that, but at least wanted to show you, you can even go under the clouds, like, with, and I'm just using the watered down, very mostly water now at this point. Um, just kind of gonna blot and just kind of blend that sky a little bit, kind of make little blotchy little things like that. Just kind of taking my brush and just creating texture because mine I think needed a little texture. So now I'm just going in and actually um, needs something more than just, I just think it need, needed something. <laughs> Because for me, my sky, I thought was just too kind of plain. Uh, now it's a little bit has more texture, especially I can see it more on my end. Maybe my I don't think my resolution on these cameras are as good as I'd like them to be. But um, I can see a lot more texture now and more watercolor, you know, more watercolor wash. Now you can see right over here on this corner, it's darker than than any of this. So what I might do is take this whole part and I'm going to do I'm not going to add much color. Let's see if I can grab my color again. Um, oopsie. So here's that color, but that's way too dark. I'm going to go much lighter than this. I'm just going to go. So there we go. I've got probably a much lighter amount than I had in my previous. I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring this from up here. I want this to be um, a little bit darker, kind of like the way that one that side is. And I'm just going to bring it all the way across. And I'm just going to, I'm just gently bringing it there. So it's basically I kind of darkened that, but that's not because I made a darker wash. I just I keep adding water and layering. And that's going to give you the, the uh, intensity of the color, but you do it in gradual stages rather than all at once. And then you have more control kind of over what what's happening. So that's like little stages, little, and then blot. If you feel like it's too intense, go ahead and blot because that will, you know, that will lighten it up. But I'm just going to keep adding just to show you how just adding really makes a difference in your, in your, uh, the difference between the light and dark. If you wanted to soften edges like this here, I'm trying to soften it. I'm just putting water in it and I'm just blotting and it's not softening much because my I think my paper is the sizing is probably off of it now. I think I've wet it enough, so it's not 